Keto diet versus Mediterranean diet. What are they? Are they good for weight loss? Are they healthy diets? We're going to talk about what makes them healthy, what makes them good for weight loss, so that you understand the bigger picture and you can choose what's best for you. Coming right up. I'm Dr. Eckberg. I'm a holistic doctor and a former Olympic decathlete. And if you want to truly master health by understanding how the body really works, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss anything. When it comes to diets, most people are concerned with, is it going to help me lose weight? So yes, we're going to talk about that, but we're going to talk about the, the bigger picture also. So first of all, uh, I want to go to an article that talks about the Mediterranean diet and we're going to discuss some of those points. So first of all, they say that it is generally accepted that the folks living in the countries bordering the Mediterranean Sea live longer and suffer less than most Americans from cancer and cardiovascular ailments. The not surprising secret is an active lifestyle, weight control, and a diet low in red meat, sugar, and saturated fats and high in produce, nuts, and other healthful foods. Again, they throw in weight control as if that was the causative factor of health rather than the other way around. When you get healthy, the weight comes to a normal level for you. So in one of the big yearly votes where expert panels vote on the best diet, then the Mediterranean diet was at one year was voted number one best overall diet. And they talk about uh, that it has plenty of fruits, that it has plenty of veggies, lots of whole grains, lots of nuts, legumes, and olive oil. And then they say that the diet is limited in fish and seafood, that they have it once or twice a week, that they have limited poultry, egg, and cheese, and that they very rarely eat sweets or red meat. They claim that they drink a good amount of wine and that in moderation that's good for you as well. So the thing to keep in mind is that the Mediterranean Sea is a large area. There are several countries bordering with many different cultures. So typically they primarily talk about Greece, the, the Greek culture as representing the Mediterranean diet, but there's Italian, there's French, there's Spanish living there as well that have different cultures and slightly different habits. The reason they focus in on Greece and the Greek diet is that the Mediterranean diet is very rich in olive oil and the Greek consume by far the most olive oil of anyone in the world. So we're going to talk primarily about that and I'm going to give an example because I was in a part of Greece, uh, it was an island south of Greece called Crete that exemplifies this diet very, very well. And while my experience isn't ironclad and doesn't represent this completely by any means, I just want to share what I saw. And sure enough, they had a good amount of fruits. They had lots and lots of vegetables. There was never a meal without a tomato salad, tomato, onion, cucumber salad. Um, I didn't see much nuts or legumes. Uh, maybe that's because I didn't look for them, but that didn't seem to be a huge component. Olive oil, absolutely. It's a staple. It's not a condiment. It's, it's a food that you consume with everything. I saw plenty of fish and seafood and I saw plenty of poultry, eggs and cheese and I saw a lot of red meat. Uh, didn't see many sweets again because I don't look for them but while they didn't have any cows they had goats and sheep running around everywhere and they also had chickens running around everywhere. So they had plenty of, of red meat. They also had pork was very, very common. So red meat was basically eaten with, with every meal. They served plenty of wine, even though I held back a good bit. And I think wine's all right in, in moderation, but yes, that's certainly a big part of the Mediterranean culture. So my experience didn't exactly match the 
expert panel. I think they just want it to be a lot of vegetables and not so much meat and what they think of as saturated fats, while in reality those are present in very generous amounts. So how do the macronutrients compare? Well, there isn't a set number, of course, for the Mediterranean diet because there's such a great variation. But based on what the typical impression is and based on my first impression, I would say that about 50% of calories come from fat, 20% from protein, and about 30% from carbohydrates. It's the US Department of Agriculture, the Mayo Clinic, the American Diabetes Association, they promote a low-fat diet, a moderate protein, so 20% fat, 20% protein, and 60% from carbohydrates. So what I think they're trying to do is they're trying to emphasize the grain and vegetable portion and de-emphasize the meat to make the Mediterranean diet look more like the USDA. But again, that's just my, my guess of what's going on. And then the keto, of course, is a high-fat, moderate protein, very low-carb diet. But if we look at the, the top example of what the Mediterranean probably is like, then it is actually closer to the keto diet than it is to the recommended US diet. So then in the article, they ask some questions and they ask, will it help you lose weight? And the, they quote some research. So first they say, while some people fear that eating a diet that's relatively high in fat will keep them fat, more and more research is suggesting the opposite is true. Really? It's wonderful, isn't it, that they're starting to wake up. And they say, if you build a calorie deficit into your meal plan and you burn off extra calories by exercising, you should shed some pounds. And how quickly and whether you keep them off is up to you. And that is just wrong because all diets fail if you emphasize calorie deficits. Your body will adapt. The only way that you're going to sustain permanent weight loss, sustainable weight loss, is to reduce insulin resistance. And to the degree that the diet can do that, then you will be successful. So they quote some studies and a 2016 study in The Lancet had a five-year trial with 7,400 adults with type 2 diabetes or cardiovascular disease. And they were designed either a Mediterranean diet supplemented with olive oil, a Mediterranean diet supplemented with nuts, or a control diet, which they didn't specify. And they found that the Mediterranean diet did better than the control, which we can only assume then is some kind of standard diet. But they say the people that were supplemented with olive oil lost the most. Why? Because they introduce a whole food that doesn't stimulate insulin, so they can reverse their insulin resistance and they lose weight. Another study with 259 diabetics were assigned either a low-carb Mediterranean, a traditional Mediterranean, or a diet recommended by the American Diabetes Association. And after a year, they found that all groups had lost weight, but the low-carb Mediterranean group had lost 50% more than the other two groups. So again, low-carb means they're eating more fat and they're reducing insulin resistance because they're not stimulating insulin. In a third study they mentioned were 322 moderately obese adults. They again give them one of three diets. One, a low-fat calorie-restricted. Two, a calorie-restricted Mediterranean. Or three, a non-calorie-restricted low-carb. After two years, the first group, the calorie-restricted low-fat, 
worst combination, had lost six pounds. The calorie restricted Mediterranean, allowing them a little more fat, lost nine pounds. And with low carb, but no calorie restriction, they lost the most, 10 pounds. And they finish up saying a 2008 analysis of the 21 studies of the journal Obesity Reviews concluded the jury is still out on whether following the Mediterranean diet will lead to weight loss or a lower likelihood of being overweight or obese. So why are they so confused? Because they don't understand physiology. They don't look at the mechanisms involved. They look at labels, they call it this diet or that diet, instead of understanding the common factors and the mechanisms that make it happen. So why is the Mediterranean a good choice? Why could it be a good choice for you? Because they eat real food. They eat meat, they eat vegetables, they eat lots and lots of salads, and most of it is grown locally. On Crete, there were animals running around. There were chickens and goats and sheep. There were olive trees everywhere you could look. It's a local economy. They grow it the way they've grown it for hundreds or thousands of years. And another secret is the extra virgin olive oil. They consume over 30 liters of olive oil per person per year. Every man, woman, and child, over 30 liters of olive oil. Greece, on average, I think, is somewhere around 25 liters, and then it, it goes down from there. And that's, again, why they emphasize Greece. And 30 liters of olive oil is 270,000 calories. That represents over a third of all all the calories produced from a single item. So it's not that olives is this magical food that's just going to turn your health on, or it's going to heal your body. It's just a food that hasn't been destroyed. That's all it is. So by eating tons and tons of olive oil, they get a nutritious source of energy that does not stimulate insulin, that has a almost zero influence on insulin, and it hasn't been destroyed. There are no rancid fats, there are no toxins, there's no additives, it's simply a whole food. Just like they're getting their energy from meat and salads and local stuff, the olive oil is just another food. Don't think of it as something miraculous that's going to do anything. It's just that they're getting energy from something that, does, that hasn't been destroyed. Most of the fats eaten in the Western world, like vegetable oils and margarine and processed fats and processed food, the food has been destroyed. That's why the Mediterranean diet is better than the standard Western diet, because most of the Western food has been destroyed. It's been processed, it has chemicals, it has added sugar, it's been altered. So please keep that in mind. There is no miracle. If we just learn to eat real food, humans can thrive on a wide variety of different things. If you have insulin resistance, you need to go a little bit lower or a lot lower on the carb scale to create the results you want and reverse insulin resistance. Forget the labels. It doesn't really matter if it's called a carnivore diet or a Mediterranean diet or a DASH diet or a South Beach or an Atkins or a keto or a low carb. All you need to worry about is, does it have whole food? And if you're insulin resistant, then you cut the carbs. And if you're not, or if you reverse your insulin resistance, then you can increase your carbs a little bit and you can keep eating real foods and do real well. So which one is better, the keto diet or the Mediterranean diet? Well, it depends on where you are on your insulin resistance. If you need to go keto, you can still do that and basically follow a Mediterranean diet. Because if you notice, based on my experience, uh, be moderate with the wine, don't eat any sweets, but then they have red meat, they have poultry, eggs and cheese, fish, seafood, olive oils. Be careful on the legumes and cut out the grains. Have a few fruits and then all the rest 
you can eat the Mediterranean diet as long as you eat whole food. So they're not that different. The key component is that we eat things that haven't been altered or destroyed. Let me know your thoughts on this. If you have experiences or questions, please share those below. If you're new to the channel and you appreciate this kind of content, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell. And if you have some people that you care about, please share these videos with them because they all need to get healthier and understand these things. Thanks for watching.